Do we want to talk about the uh, the ship that I was air yeah. captains? As long as he's the captain. Can somebody describe the peace ship? Well, that's that'd be kind of fun. Forty miles across and thirty-eight miles high, kind of like a balloon that squashed on the top mm -hmm. and the bottom. In the control center, it looks just like a bump on it <laughs> because it's so large, and that the control room has three levels, and each level is twenty feet. And there's hundreds of rooms. <laughs> it's so big that you have to have a kind of a go kart to go around. <laughs> you can't walk that far and get any place when you want to. But it's mostly meeting rooms, and there's a lot of uh, rooms that dignitaries can stay in when they're there. And it has to make different atmospheres for different species that come and they have to have different food for them. And this is all self-contained. They grow their own food, they uh, have water, everything that they need, they have there on the ship. And they said the, uh, where they have the machinery is like three miles high in itself. That's for the atmosphere, making the atmosphere. Making the atmosphere and stuff. And um, some of the stuff is so big that that uh, there's kind of like a park setting and it even has clouds in it and rains once in a while. I just want to explain to the people that the peace ship was designed and built specifically to be like an intergalactic meeting, meeting place for all the different species and that's why it has these capabilities because it was designed specifically for that purpose. And it has gone to many different places in the universe where it's needed, where they need to go and check out the species to see what's going on and see if they can help. And it, it's for everyone but belongs to no one. Yeah. That's why it's just, it's, it's there available for anybody. It's been in service for over 2,700 years. Eric is the 48th captain. And I like the uh, description they gave of, of the docking bay area. You come up through the bottom and it can handle a craft that is about two miles in diameter and what did they say ten miles long can yeah. come up through the bottom the the larger ones stay to the bottom yep. and the smaller ships are go up levels and the top levels for the smallest ship and they when you get off your ship and you go into the into the interior, you go through a guarded system because there has been negative beings that have tried to get on board and that was stopped because they're only there to cause trouble. It's like a person that was like a scanner. They could scan your emotions or your spiritual level or something to see if you posed a threat. Right. It's a, a non-invasive way of checking uh, DNA. There's also a soul scanner they are usually very accurate. And there was at one time, like you said, a breach. Right. Of two individuals got on. And I find it very interesting that they explained that they, they don't do implants. They don't need to. They have the soul scanner, but it's a, it's a, once they have contact with you, each soul is different. It vibrates different. It has a different feeling to it. And once they have had contact with you, they put that in the computer and they know where you are at all times. But they don't track you individually to see where you are 24 hours a day or where they're going to come and take you away because they don't do that. Well, and they don't, they did not do that originally without your permission either. So contact, he had full consciousness, awareness that this was going to occur. And it's like Bonnie said, it's a non-invasive way of checking your soul's vibration. That was the first time I ever realized that, gee, that soul's pretty important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, even if you fool yourself, you're not going to fool that. No, you can't. You can't fool it. <laughs> you know, so I think that's wonderful. <laughs> if we had that ability, I think we'd be very shocked if 
people who try to present themselves as a different way than they really are. Yep. And the pea ship is self-sustaining. They yeah. grow all of their own food. Yep. So that's why it's so large and they can do all repairs to the ship. It cannot come in any atmosphere because it's so large. That's why they have so many smaller ships that they can come in to the planets. Mm -hmm. It's just too large. It was built in space because it was so large. Oh, it's roughly the size of what, Chicago, they said? Roughly, yeah. That's, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you were saying they grow their own food, they have an atmosphere on board. There's streams, birds, animals, clouds, clouds. Um, they recycle everything. You know, they don't waste anything and they don't use water like for washing or cleaning themselves and mm -hmm. their clothes. It's some kind of a vibrational sonic. Yes. So cleansing somehow. <clears throat> so your clothes would last longer. <laughs> and your water supply. 